Good evening, everybody. Uh, I got started in this uh, kind of by chance. I was reading a lot of the press on gas drilling and hearing confusing stories about gas production and what were confusing to me. I heard a lot of stories about people making a lot of money, gushing wells, and I heard uh, stories about people making no money and dry holes. And not knowing a lot, whole lot about geology like I've learned working with these gentlemen, uh, I wanted to explore that for myself and see if I could explain it. Because I couldn't find anything online or in talking to people to explain what that, that significant variation in uh, information was. So I embarked on the uh, process that I'm going to explain to you tonight and show you what I found. This is a, an animation map from uh, MCOR, the Marcellus Center for Outreach and Research, and it shows you the build out of the wells in Pennsylvania that uh, have occurred since 2007. Uh, and you can see, like has already been pointed out, there's a lot of, lot of activity in northeastern and southwestern. Uh, there's a number of different uh, consolidation areas like uh, Chip mentioned. So if I'm going to understand what's going on south of the border, I had to uh, pick an area of interest. I picked six counties in the northern tier of Pennsylvania, uh, ranging across the border. And then uh, I had read about the most productive area down there in the uh, Tri-County area, just like in Haynesville. It all consolidates down to this Tri-County area. There's, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of wells there. Of course, there's a lot of wells over here as well, uh, but I'm going to show you what they actually look like. And then what I discovered when I started looking at the geology is, for New York, the relevant geology is really more out in the western counties along the border, not down there where the sweet spot is. I think Brian kind of uh, showed you what's going on there a little bit. And then once I uh, had done that primary area, I, as a systems engineer, I like to validate what I find and make sure it's not a fluke. So I went out into the western PA and I looked at 10 counties out there to see if uh, there were any anomalies that might uh, disprove what I had found in the northern tier. And I'll save the answer to that for later. Uh, so uh, having 31 years of experience doing systems engineering, I'm all about doing structured analysis, structured processes, having a good methodology, and sticking to it regardless of what the answers turn out to be, uh, not making it up as I go along. So I laid out this recipe that I'm going to show you here. Uh, first, I wanted credible data. And uh, the PADEP oil and gas reporting website has an amazing amount of production data for all the wells in PA over that entire five-year period. So I built the first steps. First, I have to get the data. So I downloaded four years' worth of data. I, I selected out all the records for those six counties. And I identified all the producing horizontal wells. Not just the good ones, not just the bad ones, all 1,540. And then I went through and determined the initial production level on every one of those. I had to have a, a consistent comparison across all the wells. So even though there's multi-years in there for a lot of the wells, I only picked the first reporting period where the production level was the highest. And then I computed the initial production values across 81 towns and those six counties. So I, now I have an amazing amount of data. Uh, I got to make sense of it all. Uh, as a system, I got to be a system architect because I'm good at finding patterns and putting together a very coherent description of a very complex system for hundreds of engineers to do development work too. So I, I know how to do this kind of stuff. And, and what I found, I was able to use to project into New York, I think pretty convincingly. And I was absolutely stayed with publicly available data. Anybody that sees what my recipe for how I did this work is and has access to that database can go check me out. OK, here's the initial production uh, concept that I was mentioning. I'm sure you've all heard about that. It's on the top of this decline curve. It's that very first uh, producing point in the first 30 days. 
The other uh, curve here is the uh, cumulative uh, production. So this is over a 10 year period. You can see it declines, but I, I wasn't paying any attention to any of this data down here. I only started and used for comparison that initial production. Since a lot of, it's a six month reporting period, I mathematically corrected up this curve to the starting point for anything that was, came online you know, beyond the 30 day point. And so I presented all the wells in their best light as they would have been when they first came online. So here's the, here's the first pattern I, I started to find. Uh, I, I mapped all of the wells, all 1,540 across the uh, six counties into a, a uh, performance grid here, zero to two, two to four, four to seven, and seven plus. And I calculated the percentage of wells in each one of those buckets because I, for my pattern I needed to do this. And I, it, I determined the median, which is the point at which there's the equal number of wells above that point and below that point. And it's 4.0 across all of those. 4.0 million cubic feet per day across all those wells. Now here's just an example of the data that I, I cranked through on, on those 1,540 wells. Uh, there's a sample of four towns. So we had Potter, Pleasant. I determined using the th thickness and depth maps that uh, Brian mentioned, the thickness and depth of the town. Uh, I computed the median IP for all the wells in that town. So in this case there were six, four, five, and seven. There were, there were the maximum well count in a town was 94, so I couldn't fit all that on this chart. So I just wanted to show you a sampling of what, I, what what's in my spreadsheet. And I introduced that color code across all of them. So this took a while uh, to assemble all this, but here you can see the performance is pretty consistent in a narrow band, and then over here it ranges all the way from 0.4 up to nine. And this is pretty representative of all uh, all 81 towns. There's a, there can be a very wide uh, degree of performance variation within a town in a fairly small geographic area. And that would explain why, you know, some people are getting big wells and some people are getting small wells and, and less uh, uh, return for the landowner. Uh, but anyway, I, I color coded all this stuff. So when I first started, this spreadsheet had no color in it. And then I started adding color and I said, hmm, something going on here. Uh, so that was my major starting point. And then I started looking at, I rolled all this up, like I said, to the town level and the county level. Because if you just stare at all this data down at the, at the well level, it just looks like a big pile of numbers and colors. You really can't see what's going on. So I said, all right, I'm going to start top down. Because on, on my architecture charts in my profession, I always started top down. My architecture, my system level architecture always fit on one chart. So here's one chart, it's thickness and we're gonna see what's going on here. Uh, Wyoming came in at 6.8, that's pretty good. If you think about every single well, the median across all the wells is 6.8, that's pretty good. But they only had 52 wells in Wyoming, so not, you know, not a big sample, but it turned out it was the best performing county. Uh, 363 wells in Susquehanna, 6.5. That, I mean, that's really good. In order to get that number, you got to have a lot of really big wells because of the variation within the town. Moving west, 4.4. We just dropped off two points uh, going into, into Bradford, and they, they drilled the most wells of the, of the six counties, but they didn't get the same productivity. Something going on here. Well, look what's happening. The, the thickness is dropping from 300 down here. All the wells in Wyoming were at 300 feet. Now we've got a sampling down to 150 in uh, Tioga. Next we're over into Tioga, PA, 430 wells. They didn't get a great return. They're down at 2.7, 1.6, 1.9. 1 uh, and they didn't do a lot more drilling there. Wonder why. Okay, but that's a good thing. They, sm they, they got smart and they left. All right, so now let's walk down real quickly. What I did here was I kept this axis for the IP the same, 12, uh, because three towns in Wyoming, they only drilled in five towns there. They're continuing to drill down there, but I, I stopped my, my window at uh, 2012. Uh, three towns are really doing hot. 
10 to 12, and that's across all the wells. So some of those wells are in the 20s. Um, but then these two guys didn't do so well. Uh, guess what? They're moving southwest or southeast. Out of, you know, something else going on there. But they didn't, they, they still, this was the best county. Now, Susquehanna drilled a ton more wells. 70% uh, of them are above average or high. And they had six towns over here that uh, did really well. But you're seeing that they also had a bunch of towns that didn't do as well. Now, Brooklyn Township had the overall highest town IP of 12, which there was a lot of red in that column. And Springfield Township had the highest single well, IP 31. Uh, that landowner is probably a millionaire. Okay, we're, we're, you see the lines are moving down now. A lot more towns in Bradford were drilled, 20, 31. But the high, the high and above average percentage dropped down to 56%. So they're getting a lot more lower performing wells. And interestingly, Troy Township had the, what won the contest for no, most wells in the town, 94, but look where they are on the curve, pretty far down. So it didn't pay off as well as over here where they drilled fewer wells. Now we're starting to see a split. More poor performing wells are coming in in Tioga, which is what drug them down to 2.7. And you see this line's no longer up here. It's way down here. Potter, whoa. Now, we're out in the more relevant geology here to New York. Guess what? And it's just getting worse. OK. So here we got the reverse of what we had in Wyoming and Susquehanna. 73% of the wells are low performing wells, as opposed to 79% being high performing wells. And look where we are in the shale. We're out here in the 50 to 100 foot thick range. OK, so I just took you through Hmm. Change from blue to white. Uh, I just took you through these first steps. That took me a couple months to do all that work. And just a lot of tedious grinding away on uh, numbers and making sure that I had everything uh, correct. I, I double, triple, and quadruple check my work. So I've been through this a lot. And I, I can guarantee it's correct given the data that's available from the PADEP. So now we're going to take a look at maps and graphs to find more patterns. So far, we've only found a color pattern and a, and a high-level county uh, pattern of dropping off as uh, shale gets uh, thinner. And I'm going to use those four parameters that Brian just introduced, TOC, thickness, depth, and thermal maturity. Here's a zoom in of the TOC map. And this is the uh, New York PA border here. All I did was uh, draw you know, a line around that that border section. And you can see that uh, there's, there's a variation of the TOC in here between 14.5 and, and 17. The, the yellow and orange are better. And then I map those uh, town IPs onto there. So you can see here's the sweet spot that Brian mentioned that gets all the press. Uh, it's actually in the lower uh, zone of the TOC. Whereas the lower performing wells are kind of distributed across all the different levels of TOC. So as somebody who's looking for a pattern, I don't know, you see a pattern there? I don't. I don't see any correlation, real strong correlation between uh, uh, performance or productivity and uh, this parameter. So I can't draw any conclusions from this other than it's, it's not as important as the other factors. So now let's take a look at depth. Uh, we're starting down here in Wyoming at almost 8,000 feet, and we're going up here to Potter and McKean that are around four to 5,000 feet. So let's see what the data looks like over that. There's the sweet spot right there where the th deep shale is. Uh, the next level of performance, we're coming up. It's, uh, it's in the Less deep shale, less deep. And there we go. The, the, the poorest performing towns were uh, in the shallower shale. Uh, I, then I took a look at, I took all 1,540 wells. That was at the town level. Each of those dots represented a town. 
Now I went back down to the low level detail, 1,540 wells, and I looked at the percentage of wells in each of those zones, those, those depth zones. So here we got seven, 8,000 feet. You guess what? There's 59% of the wells are high performers. But as you come across that 7,000 foot line, it drops really fast. Whereas here, as the shale gets shallower than 6,000, you start to see the percentage of low and very low performing wells increasing. So if I just notionally project that out, you see that at between two and 3,000 feet, you got 80% of the wells are low or very low. But this is just one parameter. So now let's look at, uh, at the thickness, which I've already kind of given you a little indicator of at the county level, but let's go. Uh, the sweet spot, 300 feet thick or thereabouts, everything's really good. As we come into the shallower shale, or I'm sorry, thinner shale, uh, it starts to drop off, it drops off more, it drops off more, and so forth. Does anybody see a pattern there? <laughs> as, thin, as the shale thins, the productivity and performance drops off, as it did as the shale got shallower. So now I got two patterns, no TOC pattern, a clear pattern with depth, and a clear pattern with thickness. And you look at the percentages, it's pretty much the same story, except what does this tell you that I don't have to project this, I got hard data here. Uh, it looks to me like thickness trumps depth in many cases. But there's no question when you get be between 50 and 100 feet, uh, the majority of them are less than one, less than one uh, million cubic feet per day. All right, so now I'm at the point where I've got some results for Northern Tier and I want to go test and see if I'm missing something. So I went over to PA and I looked at 1,000 wells in PA from the southwest where they had all that drilling up into the northwest where there wasn't very much drilling. Let's see why they did that. Well, down here in green, they drilled, oops, they drilled 275 wells, and this is thin shale down here. So what's going on? In New York, the thin shale was not very good. Down here, it's a lot better. They got some, they got some red wells. You didn't see any red wells in Potter and McKean, or even in Tioga, for that matter. But there's still a fair number of low-performing wells. Uh, so then I said, all right, let me look at a couple more counties. And now I start seeing blue. You know, that's a pretty big drop. Uh, and wow, they, they drilled 573 wells in Washington County, uh, less than 1%. Two, two of them were red. Uh, that's not great. And you can see there's a significant number of low performing wells there, which really dragged their overall county level performance down. Whoops, what happened up here? Uh, we're down to six wells are producing up there. There were a lot more permits and a lot more drilled, but there's no production data on them. They're labeled as shut in, but given what they actually published, I got a question whether there's really anything more than that going on up there. So what's going on here? A uh, couple of conclusions. One, this is their hot spot and it's green because it's very uneven. In other words, yeah, there's a, couple, there's a bunch of good wells, but there's way more poor wells, so it drug it down. Now, I wouldn't call that a hot spot. I would call that a few little, little hot spots around town. Um, so now let's see what's going on. I mean, that's thin shale down there, but what, you know, why are they getting all those red wells? Well, guess what? They're down between seven and 8,000 feet, just like the hot spot was up here but it's not ne anywhere near as good a hot spot as in Susquehanna, would you say? I mean, that should be red, not green. So <clears throat> uh, that's the situation out there. So now this is just on thickness and depth maps. So I say, all right, what if I combine these two things together? Let's look at it from both 
both dimensions at the same time. So this grid is thickness going this way, so from 50 to 325, and here's 8,000 to 3,000. So now what I did was I took all 1,540 wells and I, I, I had characterized them by thickness and depth, so I was able to calculate the uh, median IP in all of these cells. So I started, started working on that. I'd take my spreadsheet and move all the columns around into consistent thickness and depth. Well, as you would expect, over there in thick, deep shale, uh, there's 322 wells that were, you know, pretty high performers. And then a little bit drop off uh, beyond that. I'm not sure why here. I, there was a couple of towns that were blue out there on the, on the, the east side that drug that number down a little bit. So this is the number of wells, and this is the median IP for that zone. Now, as we move into thinner, shallower shale, what happens? Well, we drop off pretty quick. We drop off some more, and we drop off some more. Now, notice what's going on here. The number of wells is decreasing, the performance is decreasing, and the number of wells that are producing is decreasing. So there's, there's multiple correlations here. Hmm. Why did they go down there? That's because, you know, we don't have any of that stuff in the northern tier of PA. Uh, but there again, they're in that deep, shallow shale. But the performance is not red, so I wouldn't call that a sweet spot myself. And then if we come up, those ones up top, well, they fill in that top cell. So I've got most of the cells filled here to do projections into New York. I don't have to make anything up. It's mostly filled in. There's a couple that we're going to have to fill in. So here's, uh, here's New York in this box here. OK. You know where I'm going here? Uh, I guess so. Anyway, um, so I, now I, I, I've got data for all of the thicknesses, what I primarily, and I had some data up here that I didn't pop in yet. Uh, because I need to, to, to show those. But <clears throat> I just looked at the percentage drop off going vertical here, and it's 17% in this thickness range. It's 22 here. And then it's, as we get into thinner shale, uh, it, it's more dramatic. So I just took a simple calculation of those percentages to compute these cells. And this is what it looks like. And then, of course, I had real data here and here, which are those exact same numbers. So uh, I think that you know, was pretty reliable. It was only one well, but they didn't drill anymore, so they must have been confident they weren't going to do any better there. So there we go. Now, Brian referred to the line of death from thermal maturity, but I would say that this is a pretty, pretty nasty zone up in here, too. Uh, that's not going to produce a lot of gas. Now, let's, uh, let's roll all this up and take those projections back on to uh, the geology. In the 300-foot uh, <clears throat> range, this is thickness. In the 300, I picked that because that's the predominant factor. These are the wells. We don't have any 300-foot uh, thickness in uh, uh, New York, so there's no projections off of that. Now we move up into the 250 to 300 zone. Uh, there's two little green diamonds. The diamonds are going to be the uh, projections into New York. If it's a small diamond, it's part of the county. And if it's a large diamond, it's the entire county projection. Of course, the circles are still the PA data. So we get two little slivers of 250 foot thick shale that swoop into a southern broom and a little bit over there in Sullivan. As we come into the 200-foot shale, we come a little bit further into Broome, a little more into the other two counties, add a couple more green diamonds. Remember, green diamonds are still below average performance. We come up further, we can still say declare uh, below average performance, but it's more at the 2.1 to 2.3 level, if you remember the previous uh, grid. So it's not what I call great performance, but it's, it's, it's green, it's not low or very low. Now, what are we going to do now? Uh, this is that, that, that line, that 150-foot line that I, that I told you about was coming. 
And, and the interesting thing about the geology here is that 150 foot thick line lines up almost precisely with the 4,000 foot depth line. You know, if I put that on here, they'd almost overlap. So you're crossing 150 foot thick and 4,000 foot deep. Now, Brian mentioned earlier that the drillers prefer not to drill below 4,000 feet. Uh, and this is why, the productivity is not real good. So they already know this. Now here's thermal maturity, the fourth parameter. So the green says that there's, there's possibility for below average production with my projections, which is most likely given all the data. 1,540 uh, wells is a pretty significant statistical base. Uh, but there's a bunch of them in this over mature zone here. So the prospects for drilling over here are not very good, even though from a thickness and depth point of view, there's some potential. Uh, it's probably overridden by the over mature gas zone. So what we're really left with, if you take all these factors into account, is a little bit here and a little bit here. And so I probably, I, I didn't, but I could have put black diamonds over top of those green ones there. So that is the net of my months of number crunching. <laughs> now it's time for Lou to tell you from a, uh, an in, or a, uh, a gas drilling perspective, uh, what the motivation is for where they drill and uh, how they make decisions about uh, what information they collect from any test drilling that they did.